us this evening for this chance and this opportunity that he has given us once again to come into the house of praise and worship. But we know that because he lives, we live also. Without him, we can and we will be done. We give him all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. We thank you for today, uh, November 21st, 2021, a day none of us have ever seen before. But God smiled on us this morning. How many really glad to be here this morning?
that requests our prayer in Jesus' name. And we know as we, as I say so often, as you look around in this congregation this morning, each you look to your left, your right, your front, your back in Jesus' name. They need your prayers. We need your prayer in Jesus' name. The Bible tells us the effectual favorite prayer of the righteous availeth much in Jesus' name. So your prayer counts. Your prayer matters in Jesus' name. Pray one for another. We have names that are here on our prayer list. Mr. Joshua Kemp and the family. George Nicholson. Rudolph Williams. Minister Albert Stalin. Sister Edith Green. LaShonda Martin King, who is away in the kidney. Shandrea Mason, Jonathan Pilgrim, 14 months old with cancer. Bishop Maurice and First Lady Deborah Carter, Dewan Anderson, Jerome Davis, Shandretta Whitaker, Gerald Power, Denise Johnson, Velma Brinkley and family, Monique and Pamela Crockett, Lillian Walker and family, Brother Joe, the Williams family, the Whitaker's family, Doris Robert, Doors Robert on ventilator in Tarboro in Jesus' name. Pray for the peace of Israel. And as we also want to remember our seniors, Mother Mamie Martin, Mother Margaret Nicholson, Brother Ernest and Mother Mary Chapin, Mother Helena Coley, Elder and Mother Woodley, Brother and Mother Richardson in Jesus' name. Pray for these names and family group that are on our list. It's more that God will have his way in their lives in Jesus' name. There's nothing impossible for God in Jesus' name. For the Bible tells us all things are possible to them that believe in Jesus' name. We have any believers in here this morning? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 I believe. I believe. And always remember we're Christ centered, family focused, community conscious in Jesus' name. And then we have our prayer song. We'll go before the Lord in prayer. You're righteous, you're holy, and you're just all together lovely. We just want to come this morning and say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for you have been so good. We come knowing, Lord, that we cannot make it without you. We come knowing that all power in heaven and in earth is in your hand. So, Lord, as we come together this morning... And as we call upon your name, we know your name is a strong tower. We know the righteous running to it and it is safe this morning. We just ask you right now to come into our midst right now, Lord. Go right now from heart to heart, from breast to breast right now, Lord. Touch your people, Lord. 
whatever may be going on in their lives right now, Lord. Help us right now to lay aside every weight, every sin that does so easily beset us, Lord. Help us to put our heart, our mind, our concentration on you right now, Lord, in Jesus' name. And Lord, we know, Lord, you know our thoughts, and you know them afar off right now. We just come this morning saying, Lord, help us right now. Send help. From your sanctuary right now. Every listening ear, every heart right now. Lord, help them right now to receive thy word right now. Lord, your word have power this morning, Lord. Your word have life right now, Lord. We ask you right now, Lord, to do it for us right now, Lord. In Jesus' name, send your anointing that destroys the young right now, Lord. Look on every name that has been called out on our prayer list. Those that are here in the congregation, Lord, move in a mighty way. Show yourself mighty and strong in their lives and in our lives right now, Lord. Have your righteous way. Let your will be done. Heal them that are sick, Lord. Pick them up that are down right now, Lord. Those that are confused and with doubt right now, Lord. Take away the doubt. Take away the fear right now, Lord. And give them that heart, Lord, to know, Lord, if they call upon your name, you said I'll be right there with you always, even until the end, Lord. You never left us. Lord, you never forsake us, Lord. We give you the glory and honor right now, Lord. Look on, Lord, our elderly. Give them this day their daily bread, Lord. Look on our pastor and first lady as they travel over the highways. Give them safe passes to where they have to go to, Lord, and back home. Lord, in Jesus' name, Lord, we thank you and we praise you right now. Look on every man of God, every woman of God that are preparing to bring forth your word all over this land, Lord, in Jesus' name, Lord. Touch right now those that are calling on you out of a pure heart, Lord. Have your righteous way. Let your will be done. And we'll give you the glory. We'll give you the honor. We'll give you the praise which is due unto you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. You have it, say amen. amen. Beginning with verse 1. O oh Lord, thou hast searched me and know and known me. Thou hast known my mind and my and my Thou understandest my thoughts of all Thou compassest my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Thou hast beset me behind and before, and laid thy hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high, I cannot attain unto it. 
Whether shall I go from thy spirit, or whether shall I flee from thy presence? If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost part of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. If I say, Surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light about me. Yea, the darkness hides not from thee, but the night shines as the day. The darkness and the light are. For thou hast possessed my reins, thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. Verse 14 altogether. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and thou my soul knowest right well. Amen. Amen. You may be seated at this time in Jesus' name. We thank God for the reading of Psalms. 139 verses 1 through 14 in Jesus' name. So at this time, we're going to proceed on in our worship in Jesus' name. We're going to have our morning announcement and acknowledgement this morning read to us by Sister Patty Ann Taylor in Jesus' name. Let's greet her with a hearty amen. 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 What we have to do for the remainder of this week in Jesus' name, she said uh, our Bible class will be, be postponed this coming Wednesday night in Jesus' name. So as we prepare to go on, we think Thanksgiving's coming up, Thanksgiving holiday. We have much to be thankful for in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank God for that in Jesus' name. We have this morning, as sister has said, a guest speaker this morning in Jesus' name. And we can keep the faith in I know uh, most of us have been there for a little while. I've seen Few times or two in Jesus' name. So we're gonna we're gonna get to that just shortly. But let us prepare in Jesus' name to get our tithe and our offerings in Jesus' name that we may bring it into the storehouse this morning in Jesus' name. But the Bible tells us God loves to cheer for giving in Jesus' name. How many want to give this morning? Amen. Amen. We even sang this song, give unto the Lord, and he will give you more to give in Jesus' name. You know, if we truly believe what we're saying sometimes, we'll be powerful women. <laughs> if we truly put into action what we're saying sometimes, if we give unto the Lord, he will give us more to give in Jesus' name. He's been gracious to us. He's been more than kind in the name of Jesus. So as you prepare to get your tithes and your offering in Jesus' name, as you get them, you stand with us and we prepare to bring them in Jesus' name. Let us pray at this time. Heavenly Father, once again we come to you, Lord, thanking you. Thanking you for all your many blessings that you have bestowed upon us. Thanking you for bringing us out this morning, Lord, that we may assemble ourselves together, that we may give you what is due unto you in Jesus' name, that we may sing songs in Jesus' name, that we may clap our hands, stomp our feet, whatever it may be, that it be a plea pleasing and a sweet sound to your ear this morning, Lord. We ask you right now to look down 
on everyone, Lord, that are preparing to bring forth their offerings into the storehouse this morning, Lord. Bless each and every one that have something to give this morning, Lord, in Jesus. And even those, Lord, that say, I don't have anything to give, Lord, give them the mind, the faith to believe. They just walk around and just touch the table, Lord, in Jesus' name, that the next time they come, you will have something in their hand right there. Let them believe that with all their heart and all their minds right now, Lord. Touch right now for your name, save you for your glory. We ask you to bless each and every one that come right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us bring our tithe and offering.
Minister Lamone Hodges in Jesus' name. Refuge, I'm greeting with a hearty amen. 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 Minister Lamone Hodges in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord, everybody. Can we give God a hand clap all over the house? I appreciate the warm welcome, but I'm, this applause is for you. You all have made it through a trying year. I'm looking at this wonderful edifice. I'm seeing all these lovely musicians. No offense to the young men. Thank God for the technician back here taking in all of our video. I just give God the glory for what he has done for every one of us. It could have been the other way this morning, but he saw fit to bless us. He saw fit to allow us the opportunity to come in a house of worship one more time with people that's willing to work, worship and work for the Lord without a pay pay for payday. We do it because we love Jesus. We do it because he's kept us. We do it because we've been sick and he brought us out. We do it because we see him win battles on our behalf. Save our family members. Keep our mind staying on thee. Hallelujah. We are here to worship our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Come on, Refuge, one more time. Can everyone shout? Mother Martin, they paved the way for us. Hallelujah. I'm a latecomer. I'm not going to stand here and act like I earned my right. I'm only trying to make them that went before me proud of what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to carry on the bloodstained banner, the bloodstained banner of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I greet every one of you in that matchless name that is above every name. I'm overjoyed today to be in worship and fellowship with you. Uh, give honor to the Spirit of Christ who is the head of my life. Praise the Lord to every one of you also that's out joining us by airway. We thank you for joining us here at Refuge Church where the pastor is District Elder Fred Martin, Lady Sharon Martin. We thank God for you. You could have dialed in any other place, but you decided to stop by here. Don't leave so soon. Just give us a few moments and we will share with you what God has what God has given. I believe God has given me a word, not only for the house, even for those of you that are joining us by airway. So we thank God for you. Uh, partnering with us, joining in with us, and we're looking to do what thus saith the Lord. So we give honor to Mother uh, Martin um, and her presence. We thank God for you, Mother Martin. Thank you for all of your labor of love. And I don't say that as a term of endearment. I really, I really mean it. Hallelujah. You don't, you don't know what it means to have your, your seasoned mothers here, your seasoned fathers here, until they're no longer here. You just want to say thank you one more time. So I say thank you. In the flesh, I give honor to Minister, uh, to, to Minister Nicholson and Elder and Lady, uh, even to his companion, Minister Nicholson's companion, and Elder uh, Jefferson and Lady Jefferson. We thank God for you and every one of you in your respective places to my dear family that have seen me mature along the way. I thank God for your prayers. Thank God even for my daughter being with us. I give honor to my wife. Uh, Sister Renee Hodges, in her absence, she's traveling and wanted to be with us, but uh, she said she would catch the uh, replay. So that's one other thing that I'm grateful that Refuge does. They, they not only show it live, but you can also catch it, the replay, on YouTube. Uh, I'm going to promote it because guess what? We are in a century or a time where there's no reason that we cannot take in the Word of God. There's no excuse to say you couldn't make it. You still can catch it. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. It may have taken us a little while to get here, but we're here. Come on, somebody. And now you have absolutely no excuse to hear what thus saith the Lord. So we're going to ask that you would uh, just bow your heads with me for a word of prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you right now, Lord God, for your loving kindness. We thank you for your tender mercies, your hand that has given us all safe traveling mercies over the dangerous highways. We are asking you for these few moments, Lord God, that you would increase. Allow us all to decrease. Lord God, open up our hearts that the word that comes forth might sink down within us, that we may walk upright before you, never making you ashamed of the shedding of thy blood. All the glory in this hour and thereafter shall be yours. Everyone accepting this prayer by faith, please signify by shouting, hallelujah. Amen, amen. 
And so if you will, I am very familiar with the thing that uh, Elder, uh, District Elder Martin had been um, teaching on for a few weeks now, the, the role of faith in healing and the effects of healing for the healed. Um, so keeping that same line in, uh, in mind, I would like for you to turn with me into the Gospel according to St. Mark, chapter number 5, and we'll begin our reading at verse 21. Those of you that have sat with me in Sunday school, I do believe in reading. Uh, a lot of stuff is missed and misconstrued because we skip stuff. So I just want us to take in the reading and then we'll share what the Lord say and move on out of your way. Um, St. Mark, chapter 5. Verse 21 from the King James. When you have it, if you'll signify by saying amen. And those of you that can, please stand with us as we read the scripture in Jesus' name. St. Mark chapter 5, starting at verse 21 says, And when Jesus was passed over again by ship unto the other side, much people gathered unto him, and he was nigh unto the sea. And behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name, and when he saw him, he fell at his feet. And he besought him greatly, saying, My little daughter lieth at the point of death. I pray thee, come and lay thy hands on her, that she may be healed, and she shall live. 24. And Jesus went with him, and much people followed him and thronged him. And a certain woman, which had an issue of blood twelve years, and had suffered many things of her physicians, and had spent all that she had, and was nothing better, but rather grew worse, 27, when she had heard of Jesus, came in behind the press, came in the press behind, and touched his garment. For she said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus immediately, knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said, Wait a minute. You, you see all the multitude thronging you? And you asking us, who touched you? Uh-huh. And he said, and he looked around and seen her who had done this thing, and the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. 34. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of that plague. While he yet spake, there came from the ruler of the synagogue's house a certain woman which said, the, your daughter, uh, I'm sorry, sir, your daughter is dead. Why trouble is the master any further? 36. And as soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said unto the ruler of the synagogue, be not afraid, only believe. And he suffered no man to follow him, be, that being Jesus, except Peter, James, John, the brother of James. And he cometh to the house, the ruler of the synagogue, and seeth the atonement, and, and them that wept and wailed greatly. And when he came in, he said unto them, why making ye this ado and weep? Or why are you making this big deal and weeping or crying? The damsel is not dead, but sleepeth. And they, hello, laughed at him. They laughed him to scorn. But when he had put them where? He put them out. He taketh the father and the mother and the damsel and them that were with him and entered in where the damsel was lying. And he took the damsel by the hand and said unto her, Talithi kumi, which is being interpreted, damsel, I say unto thee, Arise. We're going to stop right there. You may be seated in the presence of the king. Now, for a few moments, I'd like to talk to you or share with you what God has given me. Uh, by faith, there is a touch for that. By faith, there is a touch for that. The first half of Mark's gospel we get a quick peek into the life of Jesus. 
uh, it, 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 it happens really fast. The climax picks up, and we find Jesus that short. Excuse me. We find that shortly after Jesus leaves the Mount of Transfiguration, exposing himself to those whom he was closest to. Just in case you didn't know, Jesus don't reveal himself to everybody, not his secrets to everybody. He only reveals his secrets to those who are in relationship with him. So everybody that come to you don't have a word. We see his teaching. Uh, 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 drawing people and people were mesmerized by him. They're mesmer mesmerized by Jesus because he's teaching with one as if having authority. So much so that when they look at him, they say, well, wait a minute, ain't this, ain't this Jesus? A uh, uh, Joseph and Mary's son? What? what? Wait a minute, how in, is he teaching this way? When you teach and when you preach and the anointing is upon you, you don't have to lift your own name up. The anointing, hallelujah, starts to grab the attention of those that are surrounded, those that are listening, those that have come into con. Mark gives us a great illustration of a mob. After Jesus comes off the ship into the city, a, a mob of individuals throng him or press him or, or when they hear he's in town and all the things they've done just like some of us when we know someone carries an anointing on them and there's a service locally what do we do we want to drive to the service why because we want to be in the presence of wherever Jesus is three reasons that Jesus fame grew the way that it did one because of his preaching he was preaching to uh, first verse uh, chapters one through three you find him preaching and as he's preaching he preaches to a demonic uh, a man in the in the garden and he's sharing with him the power of deliverance so he's not only preaching power he's also preaching with authority he delivers is a demon possessed man that the man had been in his garden all I mean in his graveyard all this time and and everybody else came to look at the man looked at the man as a spectacle but when Jesus came hallelujah this man came and bowed himself down so his fame grew but no sooner than Jesus healed that man the people in that city told Jesus you got to go we don't want you here it isn't it something that when God is doing a thing and God is moving and God is healing and sealing and delivering, uh, you got a small group of people that say, it don't take all that. I don't know why y'all going through all of this. We don't need, listen, listen, we, listen, we, the Lord can do that. You ain't got to jump through no hoops and do all that. What God is going to do, he going to do it. There's always some skeptics that question what it is God is doing. We find real quick that when Jesus is also on the boat, he not not only does he have power, not only is he preaching with authority, but the winds obey him. He's on the ship with his disciples sleeping. And the sea starts to do what it wants to do. And the disciples say, well, wait a minute. Jesus, you care is not that we're getting ready to perish? Jesus asked them, well, oh, ye of little faith. He stretches out his hands and say, peace, be still. And when this happens, the men say, well, what manner of man is this? Needless to, needless to say, excuse me, when Jesus does all this, his fame grows. Much like many of us ministers, that powerful message that you preach, and everybody puts your name out there, who are we going to give the glory to when we start to get recognized? Our name should never be any larger or louder than Jesus' name. <laughs> when Jesus' name hits the city, people want to come to see him. But if they're only coming to see you because of some fame, you might be missing the importance of what this is all about. This leads me to our, our text. We find ourselves, we find ourselves quickly opening up on the 21st, in the 21st verse that Jesus steps off the ship, a mob of people come to him, and immediately an officer approaches Jesus and falls down. Now, uh, I'm sure you all remember, as Elder Martin had been teaching here very succinctly and very clearly, that how you approach God makes a difference. You are not just going to name it and claim it because you got the Holy Ghost. 
Just because God saved you, you do not have no power to make God do what he ain't going to do. He ain't going to do it no faster than he decides to do it. But the role of your faith in your healing does make a difference. Come on, somebody. Well, I have an elder that stood right here, hallelujah, that had to go through something. We're going to talk about him in a little bit. But right here, we find Jarius' name. Jarius is a high ruler of the synagogue. So his life was a public life. He had the money to do whatever he wanted to do as it pertains to healing and getting, getting access to different things. When you play a position, uh, just look at myself. Uh, the role that I play in the healthcare uh, market, if I wanted to sit down and have conversations with some people that are in healthcare, I know how to articulate my wording. I know how to help you get through your bills. I know how to make sure that the insurance paid the right amount for the charges. So I have that experience, right? But then it comes to a point when something comes to me that I'm not able to handle, I have to look at somebody that's greater. Jarius had power. He had authority, excuse me. And that authority that he had was given to man. I don't know about you, but he had a daughter that was sick. Anybody in here has a child, niece, nephew, or somebody that God forbid something to happen to them that you are not willing to go to the ends of the earth? Wait a minute, I know I got more mothers in here. Let me talk to the mothers. The, your mothers, let somebody touch your child. The husband gonna have to remind you, wait a minute, baby, now we gotta slow it down. Slow it down, you just don't handle something. You don't mess with a woman's child, okay? And you don't mess with a parent's child, period. So Jarius is a ruler, and it was not common for everybody that uh, 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 seen Jesus to go to Jesus because there were some people that said, why are you going to him? That's just the carpenter's son. But Jarius was willing to try whatever he needed to get healing for his daughter. Faith, hallelujah, is the full assurance in the heart. Uh huh. And then you are forwarding all issues toward heaven. That's something that I can't do. Hallelujah. But I know the one that can do it. And when Jesus steps off the boat, comes into the city, Jarius sees him. They gather around him and immediately they come to Jesus. Now, everybody that came to Jesus didn't bow down to Jesus. There's a certain approach and posture that we have to have when we're looking for God to move on our behalf. Hallelujah. The daughter couldn't get to Jesus herself, so the parent had to approach Christ to get Christ to turn it around in her face. Hallelujah. I got any parents in here that have to pray for their son. Hallelujah. I was a wayward one. I didn't know nothing about God. I came straight off the streets. So I had grandmama praying for me. I had grandmamas and grandpapas praying for me. Hallelujah. And I'm so glad that they did. We find in the text. So Jesus sees uh, uh, Jairus when Jairus bends down and he says, listen, master, uh, 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 please come with me. My daughter lieth at the point of death, and I pray that you will come and lay hands on her that she may be healed. What do we see in the text? We see faith that he says, look, I recognize who you are. I'm a public official. I can get whatever help that I need, but they are not able to help me. I'm at my wit's end. Can you come to my house, hallelujah, and as you come to my house, lay your hands on my child. Because when you lay your hands, hey, there's a touch for that. If you lay your hands on my child, she will live. So the climax of the story comes. We find that Jesus does what he does. When we approach him right, when we make our appeal to him by faith, see, faith moves God. Let's be clear. Faith moving God is not based on whether you have been born again. Faith moves God. And he reigns on the just, just as well as the unjust. Praise the name of our God. So this uh, 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 officer made it his business to make the appeal. He got Jesus' attention, and Jesus is following him. But have any of you ever known that when you reached out to the Lord in prayer, he gave you confirmation? You knew he was going to do a thing? You have shown enough confirmation. But while you were waiting, 
it seemed like somebody else being blessed. I, I think blessings is too, sorry Facebook, I think blessings is too generic. Let's do it this way. You waiting for Jesus and you know he's going to do what he said he's going to do, but then somebody else gets healed and you waiting for healing and you saying, well, wait a minute, Jesus, I'm living this life. I'm giving my tithing. I'm giving myself to be used by you. How do you skip over me to bless them? While Jesus is on his way, I'm in the book. While Jesus is on his way to touch his Jarius' daughter, a woman, the Bible didn't even give her a name. And some of us church folk done gave a woman a name and called her. <laughs> I'm sorry. The woman with the issue of blood. Right? Jesus, or the text, Mark says she's a certain woman. She didn't even get named. Personally speaking, you are not what they call you. You and I have a story. What would they call you if they called you for what you did in the past? What would your name be? Okay, let's just take a pause for the cause for here because this woman had an issue much like many of us. We all struggle with something. Can we just be real in here? Now, one thing I know that Elder Martin promotes is transparency. You can't get help if you're lying about it. You come to the hospital and say you sick. And they say, well, have you been drinking? And you say, no, but you just got fit. That's a lie. You can't get healing if you're not willing to be transparent. While Jesus is walking, following Jarius to his daughter's house, I mean, uh, to, yeah, where his daughter is, there's a woman that comes up in the press and she reaches out because she had this issue that she had to deal with. Now, y'all familiar with this story? Y'all have heard this biblical instances every which way. But I want us to pause for a moment and understand that Jarius' daughter was also a public figure, right? So publicly, people are waiting to see what's gonna happen to this daughter. While Jesus is going, the woman with the issue, her issue was just not with not uh, bleeding all this time. She couldn't go to Thanksgiving dinners. She could not go, based on Leviticus, she could not come together for family gatherings. She could not go visit grandma. She could not go visit her, her, her mama. She could not have a boyfriend. She couldn't do none of those things. So while Jarius' daughter was public, this woman with the issue had to be private. Jarius' daughter was 12. This woman with the issue was sick for 12 years. We got two issues, but one God. Jesus is going to Jarius' house, and the woman, the Bible says, dragged herself because she did all she could do Nothing got better, but she said within her mind, the role of faith in healing has a lot to do with how you think. How you think of God. It can't just be a thought neither. It has to be something in your heart. She said, if I could just touch, because she knew the power that was in Jesus was so radiant that if I could just touch the hem, if I could just touch a piece of his garment. Now, mind you, mind you, let's slow it. The woman had an issue with blood and she by law was not supposed to touch the priest but the God that we serve hey, 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 I'm gonna get in trouble right here is not about following your rules when it comes 
to healing, my faith requires Jesus to move. Lord, I praise you. What you saying, preacher? That guess what? Despite what your rules are, if I have the right mindset coupled with the heart that know that God can do it, the very thing is, hallelujah, he can shift me from waiting on it into walking in it. Come on, somebody, and give God a hand, praise. This woman, hallelujah, he can shift me from waiting on it into walking in it. And the lovely thing about it is, you can't do nothing about it. Did you hear what I said, Facebook? The woman comes behind him. I know, we love that part. That's when she touch him, she's healed. She's good, right? So much so that because she touched the priest, she knew it was not according to law, so she hid. Jesus says, we talked about the person need to heal and the issue, right? But I want every one of you out there and in here to understand that you and I play a role too. Jesus said, who touched me? The disciples said, all these people around you, Jesus, really? Are you... They rubbing up against you and you asking us, how are all these people around you? Are you really asking us who touched you? He said, oh, I know somebody touched me because I felt the virtue go out of me. Refuge. How many of us are rubbing Jesus but not are touching Jesus? Oh, you think because of rub, you touch, no, no, no. You can be around Jesus, but not with Jesus. You can be close to Jesus, but not moving Jesus. You can walk right beside him, and it don't do nothing for him. The church has to remember that we are not only required to talk about Jesus, we are required to walk in him and allow him to be felt through us. Some of us don't have the anointing we should have because we're not spending time with him. We're around them but now walking with them the two make a difference Lord I praise you he said you mean tell me all of us around you and you asking me who touched me yeah y'all around me but y'all ain't moving me like that some of this stuff we do is not moving Jesus hallelujah you name the name of Jesus you see miracles because you're using his name but it's not because you have that authority let's cut the line because you going some may say well wait a minute minister I heard you say you using the name of Jesus but you don't have the authority the power is in his name you got a lot of wrong people using the right name. Hey, get, hey, 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 about y'all. Getting access to stuff, hallelujah. But it's not because they got membership. And I'm not talking membership at a church. I'm talking membership in the kingdom. I'd rather be a part of the body of Christ. Because when I went right, hallelujah, when I got that right, this right here, hallelujah, will fall in line. Come on, somebody, give God a hand praise if you will. We as people long to be touched. Anyone that's in healthcare, education, or anything in that matter that have any experience, or even those of you that have babies or have had, let's say, a couple at least, there's a study out there that will show you the babies that are touched and held picks up that parent, the scent, the comfort, when they cry, they know someone is coming. But if we go on without having touch, we find ourselves feeling alone, right? I, I, I mean, we, we long to be touched. Marriages break up because the husband might not be touching the wife enough or the wife might not be touching the husband enough. This is when the enemy comes in. 
okay? And I'm not just, I'm talking even children with their parents. You'll have a, a young child that grow up and uh, uh, be an adult ch uh, child, adult child. They'd be like 40, but still like a little kid because they'll say, my mother never held me. My mother never hugged me. The power of touch makes the difference. Hallelujah. And one touch from Jesus. I don't care what your situation is. One touch. Whatever that issue is, he can turn it around. Not only, hallelujah, will it turn around. I'm not talking 360. I'm not talking where it starts back, where it stops at, where it started. I'm talking he will change the situation. You are asking, we be asking God, God change the situation. The Lord is saying, no, I'm touching you to change you in the situation. So that what you think is a problem, you'll realize with me, you can handle anything. So the woman gets her healing. How good is that? But back to you all that prayed and God gave you confirmation and consolation, but somebody else got healed before you and you knew God was going to do it. No sooner than Jesus picks his step. He's heading to Jairus' house. As he is heading to Jairus' house, the Bible says... This ain't minister, this isn't Minister Hodges. The Bible says, while he, mm -hmm, while he yet spoke, it says, uh, why trouble the master anymore? Your daughter is dead. Why? Why are you still praying about it? It's a dead issue. If God has given you confirmation, if God has told you that child is going to live, right. let's make it spiritual. That individual that you are praying for, if God told you that he would save them, believe God. Jesus said to them, be not afraid, only believe. Now pay close attention because as Jesus begins to take his step with Jarius. He didn't take everybody, right? He took uh, the Bible. I mean, I don't want to misquote it. He took Peter, James, and John, the, bro John, the brother of James. Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. That's three. And Jesus was with him. That's four, right? So we got four. Remember that. Now watch this. It says, and they let, uh, when he come in, 39th verse, and when he come in unto them, why make it this, why are you, why are you, he, Jesus asking, why are you making this big deal? Why are y'all weeping? The damsel is not dead, but sleep. Again, Jesus is giving them the opportunity to exercise faith. But what do they do? They laugh. Huh? When you are saying, oh, I know God's going to do a thing. And, and, and it, happened, it hadn't happened yet. Uh, Sister Mary's son got saved, and, and Brother John's wife got saved, right? And you know your husband you've been praying for that you're asking God to save, and he told you he was going to save him. Hallelujah. When you tell some of the other saints, I don't know why she keep praying about that. That man ain't going to come in here. Listen. 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 Come on, somebody. Who are you? You don't have a heaven or a hell, nor do you can you pay a shot. You can't turn one hair on your head from black to gray or black to white. Jesus says that he put them out, right? Now, what was that number? How many was it? It was four. It was four, right? Uh, uh, watch this. And <laughs> so when he, when he put everybody else out, he shut the door. One of the gospels say he, he, he shut them out. One of the other gospels, he shut them out, meaning he closed the door. When he closed the door, it was him, Peter, James, and John, the mother, the father, and the daughter. That complete number of seven. Now you won't have some that'll be like, that's some number seven is good. You got this whole stand on that number seven. <laughs> but what I want you to catch is this. Everybody could not go in the room. There are some things that God is going to do in your life that you can't take everybody inside of that private place. You got to learn how to go in with Jesus and those that are on the same page and shut the door. Shut
cut them out. You believe in God for something, learn how to leave those that are doubting outside, those that are laughing outside. Everybody can't go with you into this next season. Only the ones, hallelujah, that name the name of Christ, that got their girls or their girls, their groins girded with truth, and they're staying at the feet of Jesus. Wherever Jesus is, I want to be. And any doubters is not welcome. Somebody give God a hand praise all over this house. What's good for me, what's good for me is, is mind you, uh, uh, here again, this is going to always go against the tradition of men. I'm not saying that order is not good. I'm not saying we don't need standards. What I am saying is these type of things the Lord do, well, the Lord does these type of things to show us that our understanding is finite. I mean, it's, yeah, finite. It's limited. Uh, his thoughts are not our thoughts. His ways, not our ways. The way he is, his, his being is higher in the heaven than the earth is from the sun. What is he saying, preacher? I'm saying that you and I should always seek for Jesus to give us an understanding. Hallelujah. So where Jarius was a public figure, his daughter was a public figure. Everyone knew this child been sick for 12 years. This woman with the issue, hallelujah, she had an issue for 12 years and she suffered privately. Praise the name of our God. Both of them had dead situations. Neither one of them was supposed to touch Jesus or be touched by Jesus. But Jesus shows up, hallelujah. He touches the little girl, tells her to come while the woman is touching behind him. Hello, refuge. I got to say that every seasoned believer, when you find yourself with an issue, you need to be reaching out to Jesus. Hey, Lord, I praise you. And then the rest of us that know Jesus need to be ushering Jesus to our young people. We can't expect them to get where we are overnight. It took you, hallelujah. Lord, I praise you. You can't expect them to do overnight what took you 30 years to learn how to do. You got saved in a moment, but it takes a lifetime to learn how to live holy. I need you, and you need me. So Jesus, hallelujah. So Jesus, so Jesus publicly, uh-huh, he publicly heals the woman with the issue. So it'll completely dispel the way they thought Jesus operated. And he privately healed Jarius' daughter because they couldn't believe that the girl wasn't dead. I'm telling you, Refuge and everyone out there looking at us, I don't care what your situation is. We don't serve a high priest that has not been touched by the feelings of our infirmities. Hallelujah. He came to his own. His own didn't receive him, but such as would. Hallelujah. He gave us power. Is there anybody in here with power today? Is there anybody? Jesus shows up on the scene granting us power that we normally wouldn't have access to. Why? Because what the law could not do in that it was weak, Jesus Christ came in the likeness of sinful flesh to condemn sin in the flesh. I don't care what your issue is. There is a touch for that. All you need to do is exercise faith. Full assurance in the heart that if you forward all issues toward heaven, God will deliver. Everybody in the house, let's give God a hand, praise. I'm done. I know that's not the proper flight setting or what have you, but when the spirit moves, I don't believe in making a mess. When we are alive, we look to make sure we give God what he's given and we get out the way. I don't care what you're dealing with today. These church doors have been open through the pandemic. The Lord has kept every one of you. The Lord has brought us back. We have a pastor that's been here who 
being a public figure, went through a lot of sickness. And in that sickness, we all observed and we prayed and we prayed. And there were some that sure enough doubted. But the God that we serve has shot. Lord, I praise you. Yeah, it feel good when you are part of when you are part of the pro healing process. Come on, somebody. When you really are not saying if you need me, just call me. But you're there, calling. What can I do? Do you need me to make a? Do, can I help you with this? Can I help you with that? It shows that you are invested. Hallelujah. In what God is doing. So when you see God turn it around, you can rejoice with Him. Hallelujah. So I know that God is a healer. Is there anybody else in here? that know that God is a healer. Y'all all witnessed it, hallelujah, even more intimately than I have. Some of y'all stood up here and helped while, uh, while he went through. Some of y'all transported, some of y'all donated, but God brought our faithful elder and his companion through. By faith, one touch will fix that. God bless every one of you at this time. Turn it back. We're going to ask our dear brother. Um, I was getting ready to say Bishop. Sorry. Minister Nicholson to come and lead us further in our service. Thank you so much for your prayers and this opportunity. God bless everyone. Amen.